please, for a wonderful prayer. Uh, this is our third um, ICAG interruption um, seminar. And then um, we are very glad to have the director himself, that is the director for student services. So uh, good afternoon once again. Uh, my name is um, James Patrick. I said, my friends call me on Benny. I'll be your host for this section, this interactive um, seminar section. Uh, just that my friends used to call me Oman Penny. That's why on the flyer, I've added Oman Penny or uh, very well. Um, I'm an accountant. I'm also an auditor, uh, also an agent lecturer, and the president for this um, consult. So um, we are very glad and, um, to have um, Mr. Patrick Mensa. Uh, he is the director for student services, uh, ICH Ghana. He has um, this afternoon. He's here to walk us through how to do registration, how to take exemptions, how to whatever we need to know when it comes to ICH. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to bore you with much of um, talk. So. Sleep is for the week also. We also do organize um, ICAG classes. We also do organize ICAG classes for all the levels, level one, level two, and the final level. And then um, last night, that was much of that. Our students uh, emerged the best student for PSA. That is in the person of Mrs. Um, Evelyn Bunny. Okay, so um, without much I do, I'll call upon our speaker. That is our guest, Mr. Patrick. He is the director for student services. He's saying that I shouldn't mention his credentials. He don't like that. So, sir, good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon. Okay, so um, this is your audience. So, I hand over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right. So, good afternoon to all of you on this platform. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes, they can. All right. And then uh, you can see me as well. Yes, please. All right. OK. Um, all right. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be on this platform. Uh, as already introduced, uh, my name is Patrick Mensa. I'm the director for student services with the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. Um, I've been around with the Institute for some time now. Um, I started as um, a student person, and then I moved on to uh, examinations. And so at a point, I was examinations manager for so many years uh, in charge of the exams for the Institute. Uh, and then um, I had moved on to become the director for student services. And so whatever questions you have today, ask them and get information about becoming a chartered accountant. Right, so I'm here to explain uh, to you the relationship between um, having the academic certificates um, in terms of BSc accounting, uh, MA accounting, MBA, MSc accounting and finance, and all of them, and how those certifications or qualifications can help you progress to become a chartered accountant. So um, exactly what I'm going to explain to you. And then at the end of the day, if you have some questions, um, you, you bring them across and we try to answer them. Um, maybe Patrick might not have told you, but he also came with a similar background, um, wrote the CU papers and, and passed them quickly and immediately. And so anytime I see what he had recorded, that sleep is for the week. Um, truly, if you go by his footsteps and you listen to him, I'm sure the next moment you can also become a chartered accountant. All right, so how do you become a chartered accountant um, if you are with academia or if you are enrolled on an academic program? Uh, 
What we do is that we evaluate the academic programs and the courses that you have done. And in order not to duplicate some of the things that you have learned already at the university, uh, we give you what we call exemptions. So you are exempted from writing certain papers uh, per what you did at the university. Um, to become a chartered accountant, it starts first uh, by registering as a student of the institute. So uh, we have a portal where you move to, which is very simple. Um, we have the sms.icagh.org. In fact, when you go to the website of ICAG, uh, www.icag.org or .com, um, easily you get this information. Um, so it's sms.icagh.org. Now, when you click on it, it will open for you to complete your details. And all of you who are doing master's degrees uh, qualify to be enrolled as students of the Institute. Now, when you fill the form on the portal and you submit to us, we'll give you approval. And then once you are given the approval, a bill will come with the approval. The bill is 600 CDs. Uh, you can pay by mobile money, you can pay by bank account, uh, whatever account you prefer, uh, you pay with it. If you want to pay by Mumu, the Mumu direction is on the portal, so you pay by that one. And then you become a student of the institute. You become a student of the institute. Then you can graduate to what we call the exemptions. So for exemptions, we look at the certificate that you have, and on the basis of that, we grant you the exemptions. Um, before I talk about the exemptions, any, any questions so far? If somebody will want to ask a question. Hello, are we on? Yes, sir. Okay. You said there's okay. a question. From okay. Sir, please ask your question. Hello, sir. Please go ahead with your question. Yes, please. I wanted to ask is the exemption given only for those who have completed their first degree? All right. Okay, so um, when, when it's like uh, a lecture from one person and you don't hear of anybody at a point, it gets you thinking whether uh, the people are still listening to you. Right, so I like this question, whether uh, only those with a first degree. Uh, well, if you have a first degree, if you have HND, uh, if you have a second degree, uh, all of them will qualify you for exemptions. In fact, if you have a second degree, um, automatically you're exempted from all the level one papers. So that way, irrespective of the program that you take, you are exempted from all level one papers if you have a second degree. But if, if you don't have a first degree, maybe with HND or whatever, um, you got enrolled as a master's student. Uh, you will still qualify. Once you have the master's degree, you qualify for level one exemptions. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Need a follow-up. Uh, okay. Please, the, the, the person wanted to ask a question. Sir, we wanted to do it this way so that the question lands when you're done with your presentation. Then okay. you have questions and answers section so that okay. we can make a headway. So All right. please, let's um, finish with this presentation and we take the questions as a book. I hope it's fair. All right, so um, for exemptions, uh, if you do a degree or if you have a degree, a first degree, if you have HND, if, I, if you have even diploma and is related to accountancy, if I, for diploma, it should be related to accountancy. Um, 
all of them will qualify you for exemptions. If you have masters, then your exemptions are upgraded according to uh, the certificate that you have. So like I said, if you have MSc in accounting and finance, you have MBA in accounting and finance or MBA in accounting or MBA in finance, um, all of them will qualify you for uh, exemptions. Now, the, so once you have your exemptions, it means that you are ready to write the exams now. Uh, so if you do say MSc accounting and finance, for example, uh, you'll be exempted depending on your course area. But there are some who will focus more on the finance area. There are others who do more of accounting. Now, if you do MSc in accounting, uh, you are exempted from nine, nine papers out of the total of 14 papers. So currently we have four papers at level one, six at level two, and then four at the final, uh, making 14, 14 papers. So if you have MSc in accounting, you are exempted from nine papers, all level one papers, five papers at the level two, then you write public sector accounting level two, and then you join at the final level. You join at level three, uh, which is the final. Um, some of you who have the ability like Patrick um, could even add the public sector to the final, and we allow that to happen. And, and we have quite a, a few number of people who have added public sector to the final and they've written and passed all the five. If you don't have that huge ability, you can decide to write public sector and complete and then move to the final. Once you have your exemptions, it means that, and you pay for them. Of course, for exemptions, you pay for them. And it cuts across all the institutions and all the professional bodies that we have. You pay for exemptions. And, and you are able to pay for exemptions. So you pay registration, you pay for a registration, you pay for exemptions, and then you are ready to write the CA exams. All right. When it comes to the CA exams, we have syllabus. The syllabus prescribes the information that you are supposed to be on top of, that you are supposed to have the competences to be able to write the final level or to be able to write the ICAG exams. So we have syllabus that will tell you what and what and what you should study um, to be able to be on top of what questions will come. And in fact, the questions are set according to the information contained in the syllabus, right? So when you register as a student, you need to have your syllabus and know what is contained for you becoming a chartered accountant. Then you move to the area of writing the exams. You must also obtain tuition. I always tell people that becoming a chartered accountant is a professional area. And so just like a medical doctor who have to go for tuition, um, just like a, a, a lawyer who have to go to Makola or some other place and get tuition and write exams before uh, becoming uh, that professional. So also those who want to be chartered accountants is necessary for you to um, enroll with one of our tuition centers. We call them partners in learning. Um, that's the name we've given to them. So anywhere you hear or you see partners in learning on our website, we are talking about those who are providing tuition uh, to our students. So you join um, any of the tuition centers, um, of course, with your own assessment as to um, what the tuition center can give you. And then you enroll, so you are taught. As you are being taught, you should also be checking the, the, the content of what you are taught from the syllabus. So when you are taught a topic, check that topic as you have it in the syllabus and be sure you are on track. Uh, the syllabus, you can get it at our website, very easy to download. You don't pay anything for it. So you download the syllabus and then you get to know exactly uh, what the CA is talking about. 
Then the other thing you need to also have will be your books, your manuals. So IC had written books, um, books that match the content of our syllabus. And so when you register to write the exam, it's necessary, do not compulsory, it's necessary that you get some of these books um, and then you study from them. The books actually match um, the, the content of the syllabus. Uh, we sell the books in our regional offices, so Kumasi ICA regional office, Tamale ICA office, Cape Coast ICA office, and then Accra office. These are the places that you can get the books to buy. But if you have some of your, your tuition providers uh, who want to sacrifice and help you, then they can put all of you together and then come and buy the books for you so you could learn from it. Uh, let me also add that if you complete your, your uh, master's program, in case you're on the master's program and you complete it, you complete the coursework and you are left with your project work, you will still be permitted to register and write the ICG exams. So once you have your syllabus, you have your, your tuition from any of the tuition providers, and then you get your books that you can study. There is nothing that will prevent you from becoming a qualified or a chartered accountant. There is nothing that will prevent you from becoming. Then if you have these things, it means that you are ready for the exams. You are ready to write your exams. In writing the exams, you choose the papers that you want to write. So for the exams, um, you, you need to write at least two papers. You can write one paper if it's the only paper outstanding. So for instance, if you have only public sector outstanding at level two, then you can register for only public sector. Uh, otherwise, you need to um, register at least two papers. And then for the final, you have to register for all the four uh, at a go. For the final, you don't register two or three. Even if you, you want to write two papers, you still have to register for all the final level papers, all the four papers at the final level. Uh, we'll share some information with uh, Mr. Kufo or Patrick, and then he would uh, get that information across to you as to uh, the subjects that you write. All right, so with the exam, you register same, um, like you are registering as a student, and it's also done on the portal. Uh, just go to exams at icagh.org, and then you click on it, it will lead you to registering. When you register, you get approval to go and pay, and then that is when you go and pay for it. We write the exams in all the regional offices. In fact, the old, let me put it that way, um, uh, regional or the traditional regional offices. The new ones like UT region and the others, we are yet to get centers at those places. So in Accra, we write the exam at Atraku, we write at Zenith College, Atraku, Accra Training College, very close to UPSC. That's where we have the center. Um, at Atraku, and then we have also an examination center at Zenith College, where you can write your exams. Um, we also have the Kumasi YX Center. Um, we have Takrade, we have Kufridia. Um, all the regional capitals who uh, Wa, Tamale. So wherever you are, um, you can just move to any of the regions and write the exams. Usually the exam is written from Monday to Friday. So you start from Monday and then Friday, you are done. It comes with a timetable uh, that will help you to be able to write the exam and, and pass your exams. Um, it comes with preparation. Once you prepare well um, to finish the exam, um, there is no way you write and fail. Uh, but it, it doesn't give room to people who don't prepare. If you don't prepare for the exam, then that one, uh, you, you might not find it easy. You might struggle a little, but you need to prepare. And once you prepare, then it's likely uh, you can write the exams and pass. Um, so 
when you pass the exams, immediately you pass the exams, you become an associate member of the institute. Uh, when you pass the exam, you become an associate member of the institute. Then when you work for three years, you complete a form. And then when the form is approved, uh, and that is, is a matter of procedure. When the form is approved, you attend graduation or you attend an induction ceremony and then attend your graduation and collect your certificate to be a member of the Institute or to become a member of the Institute. Once you become a member of the Institute, you are a chartered accountant. So this is the, in brief, the, the route to becoming a chartered accountant. As for the benefits of becoming a chartered accountant, we all do. Um, your job opportunity is enhanced. Um, if I have known people whose situations were very difficult, uh, managed to do the CA. And today, some of them, in fact, there are even some who are in Ghana here who are working as, um, let me say, as, as they are working for uh, uh, companies outside the country and they are taking their monies in foreign currency, but they are in Ghana here. Um, so it, when we say CA opens doors, in fact, it actually does, that whatever your situation, uh, get on. But I always tell the students that the, the matter is for you to write the CA and become chartered. Once you charter and you have your certificate, it's just a matter of time waiting for the opportunity to come and then the next moment you are in flight. Um, so enhancement of your opportunities. Um, it, it also helps in accountability. We all know that uh, this country, we need people to be accountable. Sometimes you hear people saying all kinds of things about accountants. In fact, many of the people who had been recorded as having been involved in some embezzlement or more practice, uh, many of them, they are not qualified accountants. Uh, there are many of them who are accountants by virtue of the seat they occupy. So somebody had completed a program, uh, maybe HND or some other program, is not chartered, is not qualified, but is accountant for an institution. And so anything that he does, they will record it as an accountant. I'm sure if that person is qualified, there are certain things, because you get to know of some ethical considerations and practices. You know a lot about how to manage um, the finances of an institution and for yourself. Uh, there are many, many benefits that um, you can think about, uh, but I want to put it here. And then as we take your questions or as we answer your questions, I'm sure we'll be able to deal with some of the issues that will come up. Patrick. Thank you, and um, let me land here and wait for the questions. Okay, thank you very much, um, Mr. Patrick Mensa. He's my father. He, he encouraged me to write five papers, and everything ended. And upon telling him, he was like, "Wow, Daddy, thank you very much for having me this afternoon." Let's do it yeah. very nicely. Raise up your hand. Take your question. Then. Uh, Mr. Patrick Menza will answer. So we are taking three questions in a row. So the first person, um, okay, Felis, Felis, Tonu, ask your question, or mute and ask your question. Uh, I have already taken an exemption from the Institute. My first degree was able to let me have Exception for level one and two papers in level two, that's financial management and audit and assurance. Am I qualified to take additional exemptions? Thank you. Right. Uh, okay, so we are taking three. Okay, thank you very much. So, Paul. Paul. Come here and talk to me, Paul. Thank, thank you very much, um, Oman. Please, what I want to find out is how long does exemption take to be approved? 
I asked because I've applied for exemption about a month now, and it's still, it's still pending approval. Thank you. Okay, last question. Then um, our director will answer the same. Uh, Mumuni, commute and talk to me. Okay, if Mumuni is not talking, John, John, uh, your, for your same name, is this Maston or Maston? John, unmute and talk to me. John. John, your network, your network is very bad. Can you use a chat box? Okay, so Philip. Last person, then director will answer the question. Hello. Talk to me. Okay, sir, please. I also want to know, uh, I have a first degree. Uh, I want to know whether I was told that I am exempted from uh, level two, uh, two to first level two, that is taxation and audits and assurance. And I want to know whether uh, that is the case. And also, I want to know whether the exemptions can be uh, be made part payment, like uh -huh, you can pay it bit by bit. Uh, that's my question. OK, so sir, can you take okay. um, the, the question so that we move on to the next second question? OK. Uh, right, so the first question, uh, how long does it take to, okay, no, the first one was on the, the FM and audit exemption. Uh, yeah, so at the time that you took the exemption, uh, when you have a first degree in accounting, your exemptions were um, level one, and then financial management, audit, and assurance. Uh, now the system had changed. And it's one thing that I need to draw your attention to that when you enroll on the program, try and continue. I know that sometimes uh, childbearing and other things will come on board. And so, especially for our ladies, uh, sometimes you need to take a break and go and do other things and come back. Uh, but if um, you don't have a serious challenge like that, try and continue because every uh, four years or five years, we review the, the syllabus and sometimes we change, depending on the contemporary issues that you have in accountancy, you could change what exemptions you benefit from. So in your case, yes, you took exemption from financial management and audit, which those were the exemptions at the time. It will still stand. The exemption that you took will still stand because fortunately, those subjects are still there. But when you take from FM and audit, it means that the current one is that you take level one, tax and audit. So after we reviewed the syllabus, now the first degree in accounting exemptions, uh, the first degree in accounting exemptions are financial management, uh, audit and assurance, and then level one. Uh, but because you took financial management, you cannot come and take tax then you have to continue with the FM and then audit. If you decide to take tax um, for exemption, it means that you lose the financial management exemption that you got. So what you were giving, it will stand, or it stands still that you have exemption from financial management and audit. And in that case, uh, when you are filing for additional um, exemptions, please support it with the letter that you were giving. It makes it easy for them to uh, approve of your information. Um, the second one is how long does it take to approve exemption? Let me apologize to the person who has a question. In fact, last week, last two weeks were examination periods. And so the whole office uh, had almost been empty. All the officers had gone to the field to organize the exams. Uh, myself, I had to be in Sunyane, uh, for some days before coming back. So um, I think that is what I delayed the approval for the exemptions. Um, but behind the scenes, maybe you can pick my 
number from um, from Patrick, and then once you pick the number from Patrick, uh, you can give me your student number, and then quickly we can uh, do the approval for you. Um, the 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 third one is about the first degree uh, tax and audit. Yes, so they still stand as the exemptions for the first degree. Hello. Hello. Hello, Patrick. Are you there? Okay, so um, I have here Jordan. Jordan, please um, ask your question. Jordan, ask your question. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was just wondering if I. So, so let's take Michael. Uh, Jordan is not ready. Michael, what for you? No, don't, don't interrupt me. Okay. My question is, I wanted to know, he was saying that, uh, Mr. Patrick is saying that when you... Um, yeah, yeah, uh, guys, I'm here back. I'm here. I, uh, uh, excuse, I'm, can I'm exam shall be played in a bit, huh? Um, I am hello. back. I am back. Um, hello. 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 I have question. Hello. Hello. I have question. Hello. 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 Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we ask, can hear ask you. Ask a question. Ask a question. Ask a question. Uh, your my, my question. My, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we can hear you, big butter boy. I think our team has been hacked. I think um, there is a challenge there. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we've been hacked. Um, it does okay, though. We will survive. Hello. We will survive. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hello, hello. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, thank you. My name's Harrison, and I hate black people. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you now. I just gotta say this on the last time, okay? I'm gonna say this for you. Um, I think our team has been hard. Jordan, can you speak? Can you can you ask your question now, please? Can someone just? She'd kick you out if she ever, ever knew About all the you told me to do Guys, can you uh, stop the music, please? Uh, I think our thing is going back. I love people so much. Hey guys, no, I think we have been hacked. We, it's better we leave. Which one of you wants to put your cock in my asshole? Which one to? Which one of you wants to fuck my? No, like, no, like, no, they act. It seems like they've joined the lady. Oh, okay, 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 Please, sorry about that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm here. Patrick, I'm okay. here. Okay. So let's um, let's take the next set of questions. I think we have taken the person out. Mm, okay. Let's take the next set of questions. Okay. okay. So, um, Harrison, Harrison, can you please unmute and ask me the question? It should be between the period that I acted. Thank you. 
Am I? Yes, please. They are all muted, eh? Can yes, I have a thing type the question in the chat box? Because okay, I think so let's, read from the, let's read from the chat box. Okay, yes, I think that was yes. fine. Okay, yes. so let me take the first question. Sir, I'm reading from the chat box so that I okay. think we would allow people to uh, do that. Okay. okay. The first question um, says that does the ICG has a duration for the whole program? That is the first question from um, Ophelia. Mm. Second one. Oman, I asked whether um, exemption can be paid in installments. So, sir, the first question is the um, duration for the whole program. Okay. And the next question is about whether the um, exemptions can be paid in installments. Let okay. me take the last question, then you answer same. Okay. Uh, the last question, it says that, please, I want to know if, that is from Eric, he says that, please, I want to know if I had I had written a CA paper before. Do I qualify for exemptions? So say, let's take these three questions then make a headway. Okay. So the last one first, so that I don't forget. Okay. Uh, and I hope you can hear me. Yes, please. Okay. So uh, if you have written, uh, you can still qualify for the exemption. If at the time of writing the paper, you have not done the master's degree, and later you go and do it, you will qualify for it. The, the underlying reason is that at the time that you failed, uh, you have not done the master's, and therefore you, you were not having the competency to pass that. Once you do the master's, and, and it's a course that will give you the exemption, yes, the exemption will be granted. Um, I don't know whether I've explained it well uh, for you to understand. Uh, what I said is that, yes, if you've written it before and you failed, and at that time you had not done uh, a further degree or a master's degree, and later you go and do the master's degree. Once you've done the master's degree, to prove that when you fail the paper, you had not done the master's degree, it means that you have uh, added further knowledge, you know, that could give you the exemption. Uh, the other one is about the installment payment. Um, so what we try doing for students is that if you cannot pay for all and you are writing the level two, at least you should have paid for the level one. Um, the reason is that if, if you don't pay for the level one, it's difficult to process your level two papers. So the exemptions for level one, at least you should have completed the payment for the level one exemptions. Then you can register for the level two. But before you complete the level two, you should have paid for all the papers that you qualify for exemption in level two. Otherwise you cannot move to the level three to write the final. Um, because the system will count all the exempted papers or the past papers. Uh, before you know you get to uh, the point of uh, passing that level. So for instance, if you are to pass level one or level two or the level two, the system will count from level one, all the passes you have there or exemption. It should be either a pass or exemption. And then you can say that you have completed the level two. So if you have exemptions outstanding at the level one, the system cannot pick it. It cannot pick you as a level two candidate because you have papers in level one. Um, so you need to be able to do that. We even had a situation where somebody won an award. Uh, he won an award in level two, but because his level one papers were outstanding and somebody went to write the level two, he could not qualify for the level two awards because the system did not produce him as somebody who had completed the level two. Meanwhile, he had passed four papers at the level two you know, with very high marks, but he missed the award because he had not paid for the level one exemptions. Um, the other one is the duration, okay, the duration of the program. Uh, that why it depends on you. It's supposed to be 10 years. Everybody, uh, by 10 years, you should have finished. In fact, in the past, we were adding it to your letters. That if by 10 years, you haven't completed the program, um, you may be taking off, but uh, we were not implementing it, uh, but 
the earlier the better. Why would you want to be on, on a program for 10 years? And every day you sleep and wake up and you are thinking about exams for that program. Um, in the past, we we're not having some of the things like the manuals, the books, like tuition centers, like the way um, some of your friends, Patrick and Co, the way they are teaching vigorously now. In the past, it wasn't like that. People qualify, they get jobs with banks, with Bank of Ghana, with World Bank and the rest, and they leave, they don't think about coming back to come and teach. Fortunately, now we have many people who can teach, uh, who are teaching the subjects. And so it should not take you 10 years or a longer duration to be able to pass the exams. What I know is that if you are on scholarship, then that one, uh, if you are a non-accounting student, then within five years, you should have completed. Uh, if you are an accounting student, three years, if you don't complete, they will take the scholarship from you, but you can still continue. Then the issue with part payment. Um, you, you, yes, what we, we do for the students is that you, you can pay the level one. Then uh, when you pay for the level one, you can go ahead and write the level two paper. But as you write, you should be paying for the remaining uh, before you get to the final. And, and that is the arrangement we have for the students. Um, so if you have six papers and you are able to pay for the level one, you can start writing the level two papers. And as you write, then you prepare yourself to pay for the remaining uh, before you complete the level two and get to the final. Thank you very much. So let's take another set of questions. The first question, the next question is that, uh, please, can the students in the university get enrolled for ICAG with his or her transcripts? Okay. The next one is, um, please, with the final level, with the final level three, how much is the fees? That is the final. Last question. Please, is there any arrangement to pay all the level three papers? And then choose, choose to write two, whilst the other two left with what left would be uh, 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 um, deferred. Thank you, sir. So can I take this? I, I didn't get the last two questions. Well, please. The last two them. questions asking that uh, what would be the cost for the final level three papers? Okay. And the last question is asking that can he write a uh, pay for all and write two and defer the other two? Okay, can you write and... For a final level, can you write two papers and defer the other two papers? Mm. Okay, so the last one first. Um, so with the final, you have to register for all the four papers. All the papers are the final, the four papers. Now, after you've registered, in the past, if you register and you don't go and write, they will look at those that you wrote. Today is all like that. Um, so if you register for all the four, and and you cannot write all the four, um, but uh, you can write two. If you pass, you'll be credited with the two. Um, if you register for all the four, and for some reason you wrote only one paper, and you pass the one paper, you'll be credited. If for some reason you couldn't write all the four, and you wrote three, out of the four, you'll be credited. Um, so now all that you have to do is to register for the four. Strategically, I know some people who have not prepared for all the four, so they will go and write only two. And then at the next night, they go and write the other two. Um, but the, the, the policy is that you have to register for all the four at the final. Uh, maybe the, there will not be much time to explain why you have to register for all the four but that is the, the arrangement. Then cost of level three papers. So when you take a flyer, the back of the flyer, you have all the fees at the back of the white flyer. Um, Patrick would share with some of you later um, the fees that you pay for registering for the exams. Um, so uh, if you take the flyer for exemptions, you cannot take exemptions at the final level. So the final level, everybody will have to write the exams. So examination fees, level one, 260 CDs per paper. Level two is 455 per paper, 455 per paper. 
Level three is 481 Ghana cities per paper, 481 per paper. So these are the fees for the exams. Level one, 260. Level two, 455. Level three, 481. Um, and these are per paper fees. Um, all right, then the, the first one is uh, whether somebody at the university with a transcript can register. Yes, so recently a uh, policy had come out um, by our council that um, if you complete level 300 at the university and you are doing BSc, accounting, BCom, um, finance, any of them, uh, you can go ahead and apply for all the exemptions that somebody who had completed the BSc uh, could get. So uh, if you are pursuing BSc in accounting and you've completed level 300, you qualify for all the six exemptions as if you have completed the university. The reason is that we've gone through their transcript and we realized that the papers we used or we use in giving them the exemptions. Those papers, by the time you complete level 300, you have done all those papers already. Um, same with, same with the, the master's degrees. So um, if you've done the master's and you've completed the coursework, uh, you can also use it to apply for the exemptions. Okay, so these are the three questions. Okay, so sir, um, okay. another question uh, is saying that my name is Samuel. I have MBA in finance. Okay. I understand I have to write public sector accounting and okay. FR or FM. I have done FR and FM. Can I be exempted from that so that I can write public sector accounting? Okay. The next one. Can I yeah, register? Yeah, yeah. Hello, just, just your question again. You said you have MBA finance or you are pursuing MBA finance. You said... He said, my name is Samuel. I have okay. MBA in finance. Okay. Uh, I understand I have to write um, public sector and FR or FM. I have done FR and FM. Can I be exempted from that so that I can write the um, public sector? Yes, if, if you've done them and they are showing on your transcript. So the, the issue is this. Uh, um, Normally, you get those who have done MBA finance getting seven exemptions. So excluding management accounting and then financial management. Um, no, excluding management accounting and then financial reporting. Um, but there are some of the institutions where you do MBA finance, you still do financial reporting, you still do management accounting. If you've done these papers, you are exempted from them and then you can write your public sector accounting. So even if you did MBA finance and you've done financial reporting or you've done management accounting and it's showing on your transcript, you will still be exempted and then you can write the public sector accounting and then move on. But if it is not on your transcript, so you can get people who say, uh, I did something and you have management accounting in it, or I did something and we did an aspect of financial reporting in it, no. Uh, if it's showing on your transcript that you have done MBA finance, but you did financial reporting as a course, you did management accounting as a course, then in that case, you'll be exempted. So sir, we are taking the last um, six questions, then I think we can sign out here and do the rest by phone or uh, via the documents that you share with me, then I'll share with members. The, the next question is from Linda. Linda is saying okay. that, please, if you have a scholarship and exemptions with first degree about two years ago, but did not start writing any of the papers, what do you need to do now that you have what do you need to do now since you have what master's degree? Okay, the next one is from Balfour. Balfour is also asking that at what point will be at what point will you be enrolled as a member without working for three years? 
Um, but for, for this one, um, let me answer your own. With this one, if, if you pass the exams, they are going to give you two certificates. The first one is the um, completion of the paper. And the next one will be membership. Membership, if you don't have three years working experience, that is 36 months, okay? You can't be a member of what? Okay, the next one says that, please, can, can one be doing masters and be exempted from the level two PPS so that the person can write PSA? So, sir, can you take these two questions, then we take the last four questions, then we close. Okay. So, whether you can be doing masters and then you could be exempted from the level two. Uh, yes, if you are doing masters and you've completed the coursework, then you could be exempted, you could be exempted from uh, the other papers. But there are some papers that you can use the first degree, they are in level two but you can use the first degree to take exemptions from them. And one of them is audit and assurance. The other one, principles of taxation. They are level two papers, but you can use a BSc in accounting, um, um, BCom, you know, in accounting or whatever, uh, business studies as some people call it, um, and they do like accounting. So if you've done those ones, you can use those ones to take those level two papers. Uh, the other four papers, those one you need the master's degree to take the exemptions. And for the master's degree, the, the lowest to achieve to get uh, exemptions from the remaining three, if our public sector is compulsory, so that one you don't get exemption from it. But the remaining three, financial reporting, management, accounting, and financial management, these three, uh, if you are to use the masters to take the exemptions, then you have to at least complete the coursework for the masters. You know, the master, it takes some one year, some two years, and then you are done. So uh, sometimes the coursework, um, the, the project work can take a longer period. Um, but once you complete the coursework for the masters, um, you can apply, you can use the transcript to apply for the exemptions and you'll be granted, uh, but not until you have completed the coursework uh, for the masters. And there are three papers. Uh, those three papers, you need a master's degree to take exemptions from them. Then masters and the scholarship. Um, all right, so you've taken the scholarship, you haven't written the exam, you've gone to do your masters. Um, if, if you are a BSc accounting student, then from the day you are given the scholarship, uh, it starts counting. And you have three years to complete the exam. So if you've done two years, you have to come back and write the one year. And then uh, one year, if you don't qualify, if you don't complete, then you have to go back and start paying. Uh, whatever had been spent in terms of the scholarship, you don't refund it to the institute, you continue. And, and that's what I can say about that one. Um, but if you're a non-accounting student and you are on the scholarship, then you have five years. So for instance, if you completed a BSc economics and you made a first class and you were given the scholarship, then for that one, you have five years. So if two years you have not written, you still have three years to write. But if it is a BSc in accounting, then that one, because that one you take more exemptions then um, you have three years to complete according to the condition of the scholarship. And if you've done two years already and you haven't written the exam, then you have one year to come and write the exam. Otherwise, the scholarship will lapse or would expire. So then you have to quickly come and write it and write within the one year. In case after the one year, uh, you don't complete the program, you can still come back and and pay for the remaining and continue. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, the last set of questions, then, I think um, we have taken much of your time. Then, the first one is coming from Peter. Peter is saying that if I've complete completely but not graduated yet, can I use my provisional results to apply for exemption? The next one says that Joyce, can I write PSA and write one paper from level three? If yes, 
do I have to pay full amount of the exemptions from part three? Then the next set of questions, you say, it says that, please, can you write all the papers before applying and paying for the exemption? So say, can you take this one? Let me add another one, because um, two of the questions relate. Oman, oh, mm -hmm. please, I got PSA in 2016 and would like to reactivate my account to enable me to write my final papers. So say, can you take this set of questions then? OK, so reactivation, there is a process. Um, so you can give my number. Um, to the person, and then uh, tomorrow when God add one, we have to take some details. Reactivation means that um, you were not on the portal. We have migrated from the old portal to a new one, and so if you are not on it, it's difficult for you to get your your details captured. Uh, so you you call, and they will take some details from you, uh, put it on the portal. And then you pay a reactivation fee of 540 Ghana cities. And then, so for all the subscriptions that you haven't paid, um, we'll let you pay 540 cities. Then they will take those details and put it on the portal. And you are activated. And then you can now stand to register uh, for the exam. Uh, the other one is whether you can use a provisional result um, to uh, register. Yes, I think I've explained that already, that if you've completed a program and is left with only coursework, then you can register and take the exemptions. But if it's only to write the exams and it's not about taking exemptions, that one, even your, your letter of admission to the university, well, the minimum requirement is a WASI. So even WASI or admission letter to the university will qualify you to register as a student with an institute. But if you want to take exemptions, then that's where um, the completion of the coursework or the, the, the completion uh, certificate will be required. And we are saying that um, if, even if you don't complete and you have completed level 300 and you are doing accounting or finance, you will still be granted the exemptions as if you have completed the whole program. So BSc accounting, you will get six exemptions, just like somebody who had completed the BSc accounting. So with your transcript, you can register. Okay. So there were, so there was, I think there were some other two. Um, that question was about um, exemption. She was asking that, uh, can I write PSA and other and write one paper from level three? If yes, do I have to pay full amount of the exemptions for from part three? Yes, that is a policy now. So the policy now is that if you want to write a PSA, if I, it was even a concession, because in the past, you cannot write a level two paper plus the final level papers. You have to complete the level two before you can move to the final level. And uh, now uh, we have had many people coming from the university who have to write public sector and then the final. And they thought that we'd we'll be wasting their time if we say write only public sector and complete before you move to the final. So that gate was opened. That if you have one paper at the level two, you can combine with the final level. But you have to pay for all the final level papers plus the public sector. And then if you decide to write only one at the final, then that one is 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 your own uh, is your own matter. Uh, but you have to write for all the four uh, plus the the public sector accounting for the registration. You have to do for all the five, and then you can decide to write two or three or or four. Hello, Patrick. Sir, please, I'm here. Let's take the last set of questions then. I think okay. we can. Okay. Say that, okay. hello, man. Please, I want to know at what point does the scholarship student start paying the subscription fee? Okay, I think this one also relates. He says that, Quinn says yeah. that, please, are scholarship holders exempted of subscription fees? 
The last one, please, is it mandatory to register level three PPS at a call or can I can register and write one at a time? Hmm. Okay, so somehow I've answered um, the mandatory writing of the level three. And I've said that uh, for, for level three years, you have to uh, register for all of them. So more or less is mandatory, uh, except that they know that, or we know that something can come up, maybe hospitalized, uh, somebody are writing two papers and something happens, is able to write all the four or the remaining two and what happens to the passes that he will get. And then the decision is that if somebody writes a paper, one or two, and then for some reason is able to write um, all the four, whatever he will pass, credit the person. Uh, but the, the policy itself is that you have to register for all the four papers. And then if you are not able to write, the policy didn't say don't write, but we know we are human beings. Somebody could write three for some reason. I know somebody who wrote three papers and had to travel outside the country. So he left. Uh, he had an opportunity outside and he had to leave. He left. He passed the three all right and is left with one paper to come back and come and write. So you will get a situation where for some reason, somebody might not be able to write all the papers. Uh, the institute is allowing uh, people who could not write all um, do the, the registered for all the four, but you have to re register for all the four. Then scholarship and subscription. If you're on scholarship, you don't pay subscription. It's only when the scholarship expires. So people take the scholarship letter and they don't look at the dates. Please, if you're a scholarship holder, there is a condition in the letter which says that after three years, if you're a BSc accounting holder, after three years, the scholarship will elapse. And so you have to make sure that you write the exam within the three years. If you're a non-accounting related uh, scholarship holder, uh, like I said, maybe you have a BA marketing or, or BA psychology, and you had the first class, you also be given the scholarship, but for them, because you have to write more papers, they are giving five years. So after the five years, if you don't make use of the scholarship or you don't complete the program, then from there on, you start paying for subscription, you start paying exam fees, and you, you pay all the other fees uh, like somebody who is not on the scholarship. But if you are on the scholarship and the scholarship had not expired, then that's why you don't pay for subscription. Okay, the last question. It says that, um, please, please, he did not answer my, okay. Can you write all the papers before applying and paying for the exemptions? I think this question was answered. He said, no, at least you're supposed to pay, uh, if um, for the part two, at least you're supposed to pay the part one exemptions. Last one, then we mm. close. Please, can I register and write only PSA if I have not paid for the exemption fees for, Part one, I think is the same question. Yeah. Um, director is saying that it's supposed to pay at least the part one PPS exemptions before you can do so. Sir. So, correct. Thank yeah, you. Correct. Thank you very much for your time. And um, uh, guys, I'm very sorry about the, the happenings. I don't know where these people were coming from to hack into the system to disturb their class. So, uh, Daddy. God bless you so much. Yeah, so, thank you. Let me let me let me do my closing remarks. Just okay. a few ones. Okay. Um, right. So, um, for for those of you who are doing the master's degrees, um, in fact, is an opportunity for any of you to become chartered. It's a big big opportunity for. Uh, let me see all of you, not any of you, but all of you, um, to become. Uh, chartered. Once you complete the master's, you have just five papers. And the five papers, um, if you put in 
that seriousness. It should not take you more than two diets to complete and become a, a chartered person. And if you go to the workplace or you are at the workplace and you are not chartered and you see how uh, people are enjoying from the charter, um, sometimes you want to come back and do it, but then it could get late. So I want to encourage, just as I encouraged Patrick, and who thought that we should have this session with you, I want to encourage everybody on this platform that um, if I consider it an opportunity for you to add more uh, to what you already have. On that note, I want to thank Patrick. I want to thank all of you on this uh, platform who are listening to me. And I, I pray that you all come on board he will guide you how he did it and, and passed the papers. He will guide you and it will not be too difficult uh, for you to learn. Uh, let me also say that sometimes when you look at the money, uh, then it's like the song somebody played, that when you have the money, you not have the pan. When you have the pan, or when you have the chicken, you not have the pan. When you have the pan, you not have the chicken. When you have the money, um, then very difficult making time to write the exam. When you are not having the money to, uh, you can make time to write. And so in whichever way you find yourself, it comes with a determination to become. And once you are determined that you want to be a chartered accountant, um, don't get yourself um, uh, disencouraged by the payment of exemption fees. I know people who had borrowed money to pay for exemption fees. And today they are chartered and they are reaping, uh, uh, in fact, 100 folds of what they invested. On this note, I want to encourage all of you and thank all of you for uh, offering me this platform and opportunity. Thank you, thank you very much, um, Daddy, for this section with us. And um, I think uh, those who have been registered will do so. Those who are yet to register will also do so. Those who are uh, downhearted and they don't want to encounter the people will also just do so. And those who have just left the institute for so many years will also reactivate their, their account and start writing the papers. So that is, God bless you so much for this yeah, section. Thank you. Um, again, um, as a consort, we also do organize um, uh, ICAG classes. You can join us as a virtual class. You can join us and we have a platform for that activity. So if you want to reach out to me, my number is um, uh, 0549-660427. The number again, 0549-660427. You can WhatsApp me, you can send me a test, any of uh, this section, I will just reply. Thank you also for having me. I've been your host. My name is James Patrick. A cycle for my friends call me on my penny. I sign up. Have a blessed day.